welcome to Scroll It, the podcast about the Elder Scrolls Online. I'm Ken, and this is the BG Report. I do a lot of battlegrounds. It's the primary thing that I do in this game, and it's one of the things that I really most enjoy talking about. And so I want, what I want to start doing is, once per patch, record a short episode where I just check in and talk about my experiences in BGs thus far in the patch. Uh, and kind of point out some observations I've made and maybe kind of theorize and surmise about why things are the way that they are and maybe what we'd like to see change, if anything. So this is the first installment of what I'm going to call, for now, the BG Report. I want to try to keep these episodes short, hopefully around 30 minutes, but if there's more to talk about, then so be it. So you can expect to see these BG reports about once quarterly, in addition to my usual coverage of balance changes and general ESO happenings. So let's get into it. I've been spending a lot of time on my Khajiit Magicka Templar. Now it seems like the, the Templar OP hype has died down a bit, so I'm not quite so afraid of getting hate whispers just because I'm getting kills with the Templar. Uh, and so far it's been fun, uh, although I do think I see where that Templar OP idea comes from. Um, so this is a character that until recently I really haven't spent a ton of time with, so they have pretty low MMR, uh, and so naturally my first half dozen or so BG matches were against somewhat inexperienced low MMR players. Uh, so of course I'm just mowing down players, uh, you know, matches, I'm going like 28 and 0, kind of ridiculous numbers like that. Of course, I was trying not to let it go to my head because I know it's only a matter of time before the MMR system catches up and then, you know, the fun's over. Um, but this isn't the first time I've taken new characters into BGs. I've leveled up several new characters and it's always kind of the same story. The first few matches are going to be a lot easier. You're going to have a much easier time getting kills. But I don't know, on Magplar it really does seem extra easy in those early matches to just rack up huge kill counts. Uh, there just seems to be something about this class's toolkit that poses a particular challenge to less experienced players. But once the MMR system kind of caught up and put me in the proper bracket and I started going up against players of equal or often even greater skill, I found that Magplar doesn't really seem much more or less effective than any other class, at least in my hands. My kill counts and damage numbers were about average compared to what they are on other characters of mine. Um, you know, I would generally get fewer kills than sorcerers, but higher than average healing because I'm a Templar. But in general, I think my, my performance was about average, and it didn't seem like experienced players had any more trouble countering me as a Templar than in any other class. Really, the class that I think seems to have the biggest impact in those high MMR intense matches is the Warden, especially the Mag Warden. Uh, when you see a team with a Warden in the group, you automatically know it's going to be a tough fight. Everyone on that team is going to have an additional 10% health, they're probably going to have a lot of healing, uh, they're probably going to have major protection a lot of the time, while at the same time you're going to have minor maim, plus the excellent firepower that Warden also brings to the table, along with AoE, major fracture, or breach. Uh, it can be pretty tough to go up against a, a team with a decent Mag Warden, unless you have a Warden of your own in your team. Uh, and in that case, it's probably going to be a long, drawn-out battle with very few deaths. Um, and the match will probably just end with the timer going out rather than somebody reaching the maximum points. Um, and if you are in one of those high level ultra sweaty matches and you don't have a warden in your group, you're going to be at a pretty big disadvantage. I mean, the warden just brings so much to the table. And if you don't have those things in your group, you're kind of starting off <laughs> at a deficit. Um, so you're, we're seeing a lot of wardens here lately. I've seen a ton of wardens. It seems to be a very popular class choice. Um, you know, it makes sense. They're they're excellent uh, for for team play and battlegrounds is a is a team activity, um, and they're perfect for that. So yeah, a lot of wardens, a lot of wardens here lately. 
I've also noticed an increase in the number of pretty decent Magicka necromancers here lately. Like really in the last couple of months, I feel like I've started seeing a lot more strong, formidable mag crows than I've, than I've seen before. Uh, now when I say strong, I mean that they have a lot of firepower and they can be hard to kill, but you know, while, while they might be pulling high damage numbers, they still don't often get super high kill counts. And I think it's because of the somewhat slow and deliberate playstyle that the Necromancer is designed for. Uh, you know, in order to be effective, they really need to kind of lure you into their trap. And as long as they can keep you trapped inside of their, like, nightmare zone, then they can often maintain the upper hand and win the fight. But the problem is, you know, as soon as you realize it's a losing fight, it's usually no problem to just disengage and go find some other target. And the Necro doesn't have a lot of options to keep that from happening, you know, or, or to pursue the chase. So as long as you have enough stamina to break CC, you're probably going to get away pretty easily and the Mag Crow misses out on the kill. Um, so I don't think that necessarily means that they're bad. Uh, it's just that they're not great at getting large numbers of kills. I think where they really shine is in big, intense, like dog pile brawls because uh, they have a lot of great AOE tools to help them and their team kind of maintain control in those kind of fights. Uh, so they absolutely are, you know, an asset to their team, um, especially if it's a well-coordinated group. I think it's just a matter of knowing what the class is capable of, leaning on their strengths and managing your expectations in regards to kill counts, and really just focusing on being a team player. And they're great for that. But it is cool to see that they're kind of coming into their own, finding their niche, finding where they fit in amongst the, the roster of classes. They do bring some unique things to the table. Uh, and it's cool that players are, are figuring out how to how to be good with them and, and, and all of that. So that's cool. As far as I can tell, uh, Sorcerer is, Magicka Sorcerer is still the king of Battlegrounds. They, st they can still deliver an enormous amount of single target damage from a long distance. They have the best mobility of any class. They have excellent survivability, um, you know, and they, they consistently pull extremely high kill counts and they're frequently at the top of the leaderboards. You know, in my opinion, they're still the best class in Battlegrounds and probably for solo PvP as well. Uh, I do wish they hadn't made Streak unblockable. That didn't seem necessary at all to me. Uh, and Sorcerers, I don't think we're really complaining about you know, Streak's stun. It was already a fantastic skill. Uh, and now, you know, when you see that indicator under your feet that a meteor is about to hit you, you know that an unblockable streak is about to come. Uh, and so unless you're able to line of sight within like the next two seconds, you're absolutely going to eat that meteor. Uh, probably along with a haunting curse and a mage's wrath going off at the same time, it's almost a guaranteed lights out. Uh, and there's, there's often little you can do about it. Uh, I don't really understand that change. Streak was already uh, an ultra powerful skill. I don't think there was any need to make it unblockable. I think even Sorcerer remains were like, what? <laughs> like, you know, it's a, it seems it seems like an odd decision. I hope at some point in the future they they reconsider that decision there. Now I'm not seeing a lot of werewolves, Magicka Dragon Knights, or Magicka Nightblades in high MMR matches. I think with werewolves it's really not a surprise. Over the last several patches they've received quite a significant number of nerfs to their overall damage, self-healing, sustain, their pets are no longer targetable, which is a major hit to the pack leader morph. Uh, so really from every possible angle they've been kind of gutted. <laughs> Um, they do still seem pretty effective against lower rank players or in like under 50 matches. They're absolutely vicious in those scenarios and I think that's why they're afraid to make them stronger because they're just going to be even more difficult for those, those less experienced players to deal with. Um, but in high MMR matches, you do not see werewolves at all. Their, effective, their effectiveness absolutely disappears against experienced skills, skilled players. Uh, which is kind of sad because they did have some time in the sun. You know, about a year and a half ago, there was like a six month period where werewolves were vicious. You know, I remember thinking like, oh man, there's a werewolf. I better focus that player or they're going to become a real problem. Uh, and now, you know, if I see a werewolf, I just want to focus them because I'm pretty sure it's going to be an easy kill. You know, it's kind of it's kind of a sad situation. 
Um, and the, the only time I really see them doing well in high MMR matches is if they have a dedicated pocket healer and they're fully spec'd for maximum damage. But really, anyone's going to perform well under those circumstances, werewolf or not. Um, so you know, I, don't, I don't think that really is telling of anything. Um, and it's a shame, you know, it's a unique play style that was viable for a little while and it really kind of isn't anymore, not at, not at a high level. Um, now, Magicka Dragon Knights, I think that's a little bit of a different story uh, because I actually think, I, I think Mag DKs are in a pretty okay spot. They're, they're very strong. It's just, they're not great at getting high numbers of kills in deathmatch. You know, the developers have kind of identified the DK as this battle of attrition class, which to me is kind of another way of saying uh, a slow burn. You know, they, they kill their enemies by outlasting them, by slowly whittling them down, draining their resources until they can't fight back. And they're incredibly good at that. Um, but in Battlegrounds, that play style often means that your kills get stolen, either by an enemy or a teammate. So even though the DK does great damage and totally pulls their own weight, a lot of that shows up as assists on the scoreboard at the end. And I think a lot of players really want to see those high kill counts. And that's just hard to do with the mag DK, uh, particularly in high MMR matches where there's lots of healing. You know, you really have to take out your target within a few seconds where the kill just isn't going to happen. Uh, and that just isn't the mag DK strong suit. Even though, like, in 1v1 duels, they're one of the best, but, you know, I think players just like to see those high kill counts at the end of a match, and they have a hard time achieving that with the mag DK, uh, and so it doesn't matter to them that they actually are pulling their weight and contributing to the team. They want to play a class that can, can get those kill numbers. That's what I think is going on there, because when I go to Cyrodiil or when I just duel Magic of Dragon Knights, they, they, seem, they seem really strong. They seem like they're in a great spot. Uh, but you just don't see them much in Battlegrounds, or I haven't. Not really seeing a lot of Mag Blades either. They're not really uh, a popular choice lately either. Uh, a good portion of the Mag Blades that I have seen have been healers, which I have to say, I've seen some insane healing numbers coming from Mag Blades, like two million or more heals in a single match. I have no idea what kind of build they're using or what kind of skills they're using, but they're clearly doing something good in that role. Uh, but as far as damage-focused, offense-focused mag blades, I hardly see them at all these days. Uh, I think it's because their offensive kit is pretty predictable and easy to counter, and so again, they're just not getting high kill counts a lot of the time. Uh, and also, in deathmatch especially, stealthy gameplay is strongly discouraged, and so I think a lot of players who are drawn to mag blade because of the stealth, they just stay out of battlegrounds because they receive a lot of negativity from players, both enemies and allies. Of course, there are always exceptions. Great players are often great on any class, so you do see some really good mag blades once in a while, but generally they seem to be a pretty unpopular choice here lately. There seems to be a lot of uh, vampire drain spam here lately, and obviously that's just because most ranged CC options have either been severely nerfed or just deleted from the game. Uh, and so if you're a Magicka player and you want a strong ranged stun ability, then this is one of the few options you have. Uh, maybe the, the one and only option you have. Um, and so a lot of people are getting kind of annoyed at this ability uh, and thinking that it's overpowered, but I don't know if it's this ability in particular that people don't like. I think it's really just getting stunned is what they don't like. And lately, if you're getting stunned, it's probably this ability doing it because it's one of the few stuns left for Magicka players. Um, there also does seem, seem to be something weird about the animation. The stun seems to be a little awkward to break compared to other stuns, so I don't know what's up with that. Um, I don't think the, the ability necessarily needs to be nerfed, but I do think maybe they should look at something about that stun animation and see if there really is something going on there, because a lot of people have said it and I've experienced it for myself. It, the Even with a full bar of stamina, the break free just doesn't seem to happen immediately. There seems to be a bit of a delay there. But in general, I think um, overall, balance between the classes I think feels pretty good I mean aside from you know like I said mag, mag blades seem to be not in a great spot as far as just getting kills 
Uh, I think mag DKs are totally fine. Not every class has to get huge numbers of kills. I think mag, mag DK just isn't a popular choice, but that doesn't mean they're not good. Um, really, I think balance feels about as good as it's felt in a, in a pretty long time. Um, you know, I'm seeing a good variety of different classes and builds and play styles that are viable. The dot meta is already a part of the distant forgotten past. Thank goodness. I think most non-CP players are pretty happy about that. Um, stuns and snares across the board have been nerfed. The cost of sprint and is now way less. Um, there are numerous sources of snare removal and major expedition and other speed buffs. So all around, I think movement and mobility really feels probably better than it ever has. Uh, and on top of that, the group finder seems to actually be working relatively well, at least the last couple of days. Um, so I don't know, we may have finally turned uh, a corner where maybe the group finder is going to be in a, in a good spot and that contributes quite a bit to whether or not you're able to to enjoy battlegrounds so i have i've been enjoying battleground i've been enjoying battlegrounds quite a bit i think things have been feeling really good and i've just been having a great time i think some kudos is due i mean i know a lot of the combat changes uh and balance changes that were made last year were unpopular and really more so the way that those changes were made was annoying and frustrating to a lot of players myself included uh, but I gotta say, putting all of that aside and just looking how balance feels right now, at least in non-CP, I do think it's in a pretty good spot. Uh, it's been a bumpy road, and, and it's not near, nearly over yet. I, I don't think there's there's still a ways to go. Not you know things are not perfect, uh, but I can see that some good things are happening. So anyway, I think that is it for the first installment of the BG Report. I hope you've enjoyed it. You can look forward to seeing more of these uh, quarterly, uh, once per patch, probably like three or four weeks after the patch goes live. I think um, this one's going to be a little bit off as far as scheduling goes because it's the first one and I'm just kind of trying it out. Uh, but I always love to hear feedback uh, if there's anything uh, that you think I should add or leave out or you know, phrase differently or whatever. I'm always open to that sort of thing. So feel free to email me at catsparrowhawk at gmail.com. Uh, I'm always happy to hear from people. So I think I'm going to end this thing now and I will see you next time.